Space pina. <laughs> this kind of has like a three eleven feel. Yeah, yeah, you said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's got that the the, the vibe and guitar and whatnot. But anyway, yeah, uh, I'm I'm Marvin. Uh, I'm here with Dan and Ricardo. Hey, everybody. Hey, I'm Dan. Why, hello. It is me, Ricardo. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. The eponymous newbie in newbie Star Trek. It's true. Um, and we've uh successfully gone through the first season of the next generation at this point. Now we're making our way through the second season, which um is already I, five episodes in. Yeah, five episodes in. I feel like overall quality's been a lot better, probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Baseline is definitely ticked up. Yeah, I feel yeah. I feel less annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In general. Well, there's less Wesley screen time in you know, overall. Very wisely. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Wisely, wisely less Wesley. Wesley. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but sadly, less teabag. Teador yeah. Bagwell. Yeah, he but he'll never he'll never bag well again. Uh he'll hmm. never call anybody pretty. Uh, <laughs> no, pretty. No. Well, no. It, it, given enough time, he will. He will. Yeah. Uh, he uh, has to go into hibernation. <laughs> yeah. Until he is uh, until the world needs him yet again. I, I like to think that yeah, that 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 character. <clears throat> oh, I don't know what the fuck episode that was. Oh, once he's just, done with yeah. his tour with the electrolytes, yeah, yeah. he yeah, will yeah, yeah. He, travel he back to Earth. No, no, no. I, I like to think that that he's a great descendant of Theodore mm-hmm. Bagwell. Ah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. okay, that makes way more sense. That'd yeah, be really yeah. cool. Yeah, actually, that's part of part of yeah. the, uh, the the Tommy Westfall <laughs> theory yeah. where everyone's yeah. connected. You know. Everyone, unless it's all the same show, man. <laughs> unless Theodore Bagwell went around the sun. Oh, <laughs> and actually travel back in time to oh. to you know uh, late or mid mid aughts you know beca- to, California to become a child he- predator. <laughs> 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 I forgot yeah. that's what he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he he's a in killer. jail. He was a killer and a <laughs> rapist, dude. That's why he's in jail. <laughs> oh yeah, they're prisoners. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're criminals. We're talking about did, prison break, everyone. Yeah. For some reason. <laughs> well, one, one of the, the actors. Well, who, for the new listeners, uh, one of the one of the actors who plays Theodore Bagwell in Prison Break is also in one of the episodes of Star Trek. That, yeah, from the first he, season. From, yeah, from the, the first season. The one with the Torellians where uh, he, he, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. he is betrothed to Deanna Troy, mm-hmm. and for for some reason, yeah, and they can't and lo- pay yeah. the dowry. <laughs> Instead of his arranged marriage, yeah. he wanted his even more arranged marriage. Yeah, he wanted a psychically yeah. arranged marriage that's never explained. <laughs> it's, it's literally uh, not. Pretty. This is just a conversation with Luxwana yeah. where where he goes, why did that happen? And she goes, sometimes love travels across space. Well, See, yeah. And, 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 then, and then Chris Nolan saw that and was like, that, that gives me an idea. Huh. Yeah. What if now love was behind a bookshelf? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that's why Star Trek's fun. We get to look yeah. back every so often and be like, "Wow, <laughs> that stupid thing happened." <laughs> yeah, uh, that was but, you know, dumb. <laughs> you know what? You know what will remain constant though, even though uh, even though T Bag isn't there, Deanna Troy will still get constantly hit on. Yeah, hey. so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's what happened in this week's episode. Loud as a whisper. Yeah, which was a uh, good segue. Yeah, I have an interesting deal. Um, but before we get into the episode proper, uh, we'd like to let everybody know that this actually aired in a new year, January 9th of nineteen eighty nine. January, yeah. and if you like January, you probably celebrate Jan Michael Vincent January, <laughs> like I do. <laughs> what do you do during Jan Michael Vincent January? You, you know. watch all the films by Jan Michael Vincent. That's 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 pretty straightforward. It's a pretty yeah, straightforward it's, celebration. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's easy. Just yeah. like when you have JCVD week, you just watch yeah. all of the JCVD. JCVD available. week is close to my 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 birthday. 
Um, mm. That's why I, I, I hold it dear to my heart. Yes. I'm a yes. fan of low October. effort celebrations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Dan, could you tell us what happened around January 9th of 1989 when this episode aired on television? Well, we went around the sun again. That's true. The year the year ended and began. So yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, so there's been a bit of a break between this episode and the previous. Uh, the last one was aired on the 12th of December, and we're up to the 9th of January now. And so in the in the interim, a few things happen. This is actually going to be a slightly longer history list than usual, but I hope it's interesting. Check this out. First off, on the 16th of December, we had Rain Man released, but it actually Rain took. Man. Yeah, it actually took three weeks to finally beat Twins at the box office on January 2nd. Twins was so difficult to beat. Twins, twins <laughs> was unstoppable. <laughs> you cannot stop the Twins. I guess um, we forget that Arnold Schwarzenegger actually used to be like a really, really big... Yeah, he like, was like a sensation, man. Yeah, he was yeah. like, yeah. hey, this is Arnold and he's doing comedy, what? Yeah, like people would say like, he's not an actor, he's a movie star. Like yes, that's true. Look, that's true. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, and people would and, say like, "Oh man, he impregnated his maid," <laughs> <laughs> and then no one believed. And <laughs> now they're like, "Oh my god, they were fucking right! Look at this kid, he looks exactly like him." Ah, uh, well, too late. He was the governor already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, too late. I'm already the governor. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, moving on. Uh, on the 16th, also, uh, on the date of Rain Man's release, the political cult leader Lyndon LaRouche was convicted of tax and mail fraud. Okay. What cult? Yeah. Yes, political cult leader. Lyndon LaRouche. You can look okay. him up. He was he was a big name in his time. Okay. Uh, okay. Six days later, on the 22nd, this is just a random tidbit that I thought funny. Two robbers wearing police uniforms ro- robbed an armored truck in New Jersey. Oh, and... Wow. Uh, yeah, so these two disguised robbers wearing police uniforms, they stole three million in that heist. Ooh. Not bad. Nice yeah. work, robbers. Well, I mean <laughs> three million. Nice work, robbery. I guess I guess for the time it, it, it's okay, but I mean and, and it's also like that hitting one now. truck. It's also yeah. hitting one truck. It's not it's it's, yeah. it's, it's just pretty it's pretty good. Single it's, day payday. Payday, pay yeah. I guess exactly. so. I guess so. On Christmas Eve, we saw the release of one Rockman 2 in Japan. Hmm. Uh, you know, known here as Mega Man 2. And that is, of course, the biggest and bestest, or ra- rather, rather, it's the best selling and most hmm. widely uh, known entry in the Mega Man series. So mm-hmm. I just thought that was notable. Mm-hmm. Bang and soundtrack, etc. On December 31st, the Fog Bowl. A heavy, dense fog. It rolled over Soldier Field in Chicago during the second quarter of a Bears versus Eagles NFC divisional playoff game. Oh. And it cut visibility to 15 to 20 yards. And the reason why I put that on there is because I saw pictures. You should look it up. It was... You couldn't they, see shit, did, man. Did they have to keep playing? Really? They just kept playing. Oh, my God. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, well, yeah, where's yeah. the ball? Oh. Yeah, what? 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 Um, All the fans are like, what's going on? Yeah, this, who this said is, that? So this is what Jordy's like. <laughs> Wait, um, so this will be like two weeks late because this happened a couple days ago. They, they was watching, they were watching a baseball game and someone got pelted in the face with a fastball. Oh, oh no! And then like immediately, like it, like blood started just pouring out like a faucet out of his nose because he, oh, he broke no. his nose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then like so they took him out. He was fine. He walked off the field, so he was fine. And I like how like the groundskeepers were like, okay, let's um, it's a lot of blood here, really. <laughs> and they're like, all right, let's put some of that powder that we put on vomit. <laughs> and they just literally put they put powder, and then they just covered it with dirt. And they're like, all right, fuck it. We're what done. else can we do, really? Yeah. What else can we really do? You can't clean yeah. up dirt. No, no, <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah. Cleaning you know. dirt is a is a losing game. Yeah, you know, it's you know. I don't know. I don't know if Sarah wants everyone knowing this, but like when when <laughs> uh, she used to live at other places with the cats, mm-hmm. she would just literally throw the litter, the cat litter, like onto a lawn, and I'd be yeah. like, "Why would you do that?" Is it, and she's like, "It's nature. It's just going back to nature." I'm like, "But it's cat litter too. It's, it's just gonna. Oh no." <laughs> It'll keep your lawn. <laughs> it'll keep your flower bed fresh. Oh yeah. no! You know, and she salted their garden. <laughs> well, I wondered. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if there's salt, and she just 
Yeah. Cat pee. Curse. And yeah. also cat pee on its own is a pretty fucking strong shit. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So that pee is strong shit. Yeah. <laughs> they use it uh for yeah. um for rights. What's your guess? <laughs> hey, guess what? I have one last fact. Oh, especially now that the music's been been off for like a minute <laughs> and, or, and more. Um, on January first, Leonard Nimoy mm-hmm. uh, got married to an actress named Susan Bay at fifty-seven oh, okay. years old. Cool. B A Bay, Susan B A Y. <laughs> oh, his Bay, but not his Bay. Wait, is he Michael well, Bay's dad? Arguably, his Bay. Is he Michael Bay's dad, dude? <laughs> No, uh, he wouldn't have. Doubt. He wouldn't yeah. have raised such a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, if people look, are wondering Bay. why, why is because he? What's her name? The actor who Transformers, yeah. McGann Fox. Yeah, he, he, yeah. he, he McGann Fox. He, 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 he was like, why can't she be in a scene where she's in the shower, or no, she's at the bar talking to people, and the producer said because she's fifteen. So he was like, fine, I'll have her go in a shower scene instead. And that's Michael Bay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Man of ingenuity. Yeah. Innovating <laughs> solutions to tough problems. Yeah, dude. You bring him a problem and he figures it out, just like <laughs> the man in this episode. <laughs> Old Reva. Um, uh, which Denise Crosby is really, really curious about. So, Ricardo, could you please tell us what happened in this episode? She's very proper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, I want to make sure this is very clear. I don't, I do not want to record this again. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> she's so interested in the show, Ricardo, dude. <laughs> and and even after she left, she's still very interested in the yeah, <laughs> yeah, what's going it's, on. It's very heartening, yeah, to yeah, see yeah. her so invested still. All right, <clears throat> so down to the episode. Let's get down to it, nitty gritty. I'm gonna pump up the jams. Yeah, pump up the marking mark, and here we go. <laughs> We're fucking in this episode. Well, not fucking actually. Well, mentally, Almost maybe, fucking. maybe Almost. like um, demolition man top style fucking with a little help. <laughs> a little bit, a little maybe. Bit. Yeah, if they maybe. had the visors, it would have happened. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, by the way, do you think people are fucking like that? So here's the thing. Uh, I wanted to, so every you know if you're a new listener, I always bring up questions about about this universe mm-hmm. that maybe some people don't think about. And and I have a very perverted brain, and I think about <laughs> certain things. So in this universe, you can make anything in the holodeck, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how about like hypothetically? I'm like, well, if I can really like Tasha or the Counselor Troy, oh or whatever boy. girl, and then you go, and you're like, you're like computer, make Counselor Troy sexy as fuck, and then so, you go in there. Do you mean like what happens? Can you make can you make clones? So. Oh, are we minor are we spoilers? This, we, this happens. Yeah, really, <laughs> to yeah. some capacity. We'll, okay. In fact, more than once. Okay, so okay. we'll get there. We'll it's get kind there. of but, funny that you preface this this question with like, I think about things that people don't usually think about. No, nope, but no, nope, this people show who write this show is a little per, bit. They're they're perverts as well, apparently. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there there is an awful lot of sex in TNG. There um, is, there yeah, is. actually, yeah. <laughs> like you know, like the more I think about it, and no, not that it, it's not. I that mean, it's, it's a traditionally sexy show. I mean, TOS no, yeah. had tons of sex too, so I mean, like it's kind of a tradition, honestly, to put a lot of space sex in your space show. Every time you say TOS, I think of this punk band called TOS. Oh. And I immediately think like, whoa, what were they are those punk rockers <laughs> rocking out? Star Trek? And it really confuses me. It takes me like a good ten seconds each time you do it. Uh, yeah, um, like and I, I, and I always I, I can't ever remember that it's Star Trek terms of service. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the original terms forget. of service. <laughs> so this episode starts off and they're on their way to man, they're always on their way somewhere, dude. They're never, yeah. they're never there. They're yeah. never like, hey, we've arrived. Just chilling. Yeah. We've arrived. We've arrived. We're yeah. in this fuck planet. No, they're on their way to the fuck planet. Yeah. Well, it's because um, while they're on their way, Picard gets bored and he says, I'm going to go to my ready room and c- record a captain's log. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hate that. <laughs> Start the episode after the captain's log. I don't hear the bullshit date. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Uh, Captain's log. We have no time. Yeah, I don't have time to to to, to log this these hours. Captain's log. I, reminder I, to log this later. Yeah. <laughs> Captain's log. I have not logged my, my time sheets in over five years. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a joke for only me and Rick. <laughs> Uh, I I was known f- for not well we were all we were all known for not doing our timesheets at our old job. No, I did my timesheets. <laughs> <laughs> you did your timesheets? Yeah, I did. Yeah, was I did, it just I think, me who who wouldn't do them? I think the worst was honestly Marcel. <laughs> okay, okay. I well I when so I I left my job for for the for little behind the scenes. I left my job. And my supervisor texted me and he's like, you fucking asshole. And I'm like, what? He's like, <laughs> you left me to do th- like two, three months of your timesheets. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, well, that's, part of your, that's part of your exit thing too. They're like, yeah. please make sure to do <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't do it. What I did is I told the HR person like, oh, I did OT this day and this day and this day. And these are the hours of OT I did. <laughs> I don't have time to do the timesheet. And she's like, okay. And then he <laughs> made my supervisor. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty All right. Good. So in this episode, Captain's Log, he's done his timesheets. Um, <laughs> and they're on their way to, they're trying to broker some peace. It's, this episode is very apropos to what's happening in the world today. Mm, mm, I did there. have that feeling as I watched a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do you think they're just so well, like... The, the themes they did de- de- they deal with are so universal that it's like no matter oh, yeah. what time what time of history we're in we're like well this is happening right now <laughs> well yeah i mean yeah i mean a lot of sci-fi in general is a general yeah. reflection of what's going on with modern day events and you know yeah. recontextualizing and of course, yeah. history repeats itself so every few years it fucking happens again yeah yeah uh so they're on their way to to, to broker peace between these two warring factions in the same planet, they're mm-hmm. they're they're in the same planet, and they're they're at, they've been at war for hundreds of years. And, like I do believe you know, they say centuries. Yeah, yeah. But so these 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 dudes are at war, and they 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 look the same. They're all weird looking folk. Um, have you noticed that like whenever there's people like fighting or thing, they don't look nice. They don't look humanoid. Well, they yeah, look, they, like, they want you to be like. Ugh, okay, to be no clear, we're now fighting. talking strictly only about Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, no, yeah. <laughs> we're only <laughs> talking about Star Trek. <laughs> God damn so, it! <laughs> God damn it, dude! Now we're not going to get sponsored by fucking <laughs> Israel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> was, oh no! I was <laughs> counting on that space laser money. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> no dude. Um, all right, so they're like, "Hey, we're gonna go broker this thing," but it's funny because they're not brokering it. They're just they're they're basically Uber in yes. this episode. They're <laughs> yeah. space Uber, and yeah. they're like, "Hey, we got to take this one dude. He paid us. He pinged us. We got to go pick him." <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be five dudes that look like Jesus, and we got to figure out which one he is. Yeah, they seem awfully overqualified to carry. <laughs> Carry just four people over, <laughs> and then yeah, and we had to carry this fucker to another planet, and then he's in a broker piece there, and then we're gonna drop him back off. Right? Why they don't have ships? I don't know. When they, they I, don't it's get just, into that. It's just it's just a, a contrivance to get them to all meet. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, like also like slight spoilers. Well, it's like there's tons of things they should know about Riva like right away. You know, like they should know right away he's deaf. Yeah, they don't yeah. know that he's deaf. <laughs> like, why don't they know that? By the way, well, why the, don't the they have any idea of how much, like, they have no clue uh, at this point how long he intends to take with these negotiations or They could be there for years. They could be yeah. there for years. Yeah, we don't yeah, know. And he says, that he, he pretty much says that, like, once he's finally down there, it's like, well, this is going to take a long ass time. So, yeah, uh, Picard's like, oh, I, I had a, a lunch appointment. Yeah. I had to go pick up my wife in this other planet. <laughs> um, so Yo, my meter's wanna, running. <laughs> I didn't want to ask, what are they talking about? Did I miss something in the beginning? They're talking about these planets that are in orbit and there's no degradation. But, as far as I know, this is nothing. Okay. <laughs> they, they just put in jibber jabber. First, I, it may, it might be a metaphor. I don't know. Cause it is a weird, I didn't get it. I felt very stupid. I was like, did I miss something? Or am I just so stupid that I don't get this? But I, now I, don't, I, I feel better. I don't, Thank you. So this, this yeah, episode. Nothing obvious came to mind either on my okay. end. Okay. I think part of it might be because this episode went through actually a ton of revisions up until the day of shooting. And even before shooting certain scenes, they were still rewriting it. I so, can see that. It feels a bit like that. Yeah. You think they were like, 
They're like, hey, Tim, uh, yeah, dude, you left the beginning from, you didn't copy and paste the, the new stuff. You just left the, from the first. He's like, uh, no one's going to know. No uh, it's too late. Uh, yeah, too late. Too late. Well, the reason why actually is because the guy who plays Riva, uh, Howie, I, I'm hoping, hoping I'm saying his name correctly, Howie Sego. Man, it's Mandel. Howie, Howie <laughs> Mandel. Yeah, you. that was uh, way off, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, he, he, he's, a, he's an actually deaf actor. So oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So he actually was like, hey, can I help inform some of the stuff we're going to talk about here? Because I'd like to make it more, you know. That makes so much sense that because so much sense. of mm -hmm. like at least one particular thing that is super duper real is addressing the person you're talking to and not their interpreter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is such a real ass thing. Yes. And like, which is, I, which is something is I think deaf, he probably inserted and stuff like I, that. I, I hold, yeah, like I, I am assuming that already. Yeah. In fact, um, we're not at the ending yet, but he basically rewrote the entire ending. And I mean, that's not only what happens to interpreters, but literally that's what happens to women all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> literally, yeah. literally. I've been, I've been to places with my wife where like, I look, I don't like to talk to fucking strangers, dude. Yeah. And I've been to like a, a car dealership with like my friend. Um, oh, and she yeah. was buying a car and yeah. they all, I was just there to just go with her and they always addressed me. I was like, I'm not the fucker buying the car, dude. <laughs> you pieces yeah. Of shit. My, like my friend, Beth Accomando, who, uh, she's a single mom in, in San Diego and she gets, her house gets tons of, well, not right now, obviously during the pandemic, but before the pandemic, she would get tons of like door to door salesmen mm -hmm. and they would always ask her, uh, can I speak to the man of the house? And she's like. I own the house. I'm the person. You could talk to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that happens you know all what? the time. Yeah. You're like, but you know what? Now I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then she That's messed um, up, dude. Yeah. You fucking idiot. <laughs> um, so they arrive at this planet and they don't know what Reva looks like. You think with all the technology in the world, they would get like a, like his Facebook profile or something? Like, Why is oh, there no primer on who Tinder? Because like they also say grinder. before they, before Did you say grinder. <laughs> Well, somebody said grinder. <laughs> somebody said grinder. Who said I don't know who it was. Hardly know. Her. Uh, but they, 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 <laughs> they before they beam down, <laughs> got Ricardo. Before, before they beam down, it took a while. <laughs> fucking Worf is like uneasy, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, he's uneasy yeah. because Riva negotiated the several of the peace treaties between the Klingons and the Federation. Yeah. Now, see, so that you, seemed so like a he, very interesting thing to bring yeah. up, but then they don't do anything with it. And I was a little disappointed. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, but I, also, like, why well, is he so uneasy? Well, I yeah. think I think Worf is just like, oh, peace. It's weird. Yeah. I fucking but, hate the but word. But also like. He's like, he's like, um, not Mercutio. Yeah, Mercutio. <laughs> but ah, like, peace, if, if, if he's that word. famous a mediator, everyone should know what he fucking looks like and his deal in that he's deaf and all this shit, like. Nah, man, all peace treaties are like major like corporate court cases where <laughs> it, they just settle and you don't yeah. know what the fuck happened. What happened? Yeah, yeah. Settle. Who was settle, that? Settle. Um, so, you know what they should have brought up in the beginning instead of talking about that bullshit that had nothing to do with the episode <laughs> was uh, Jordy. They could have talked about Jordy and his vision. Like, he could have been curious about like going to the, like, he could have talked to the doctor. They could have set up the whole doctor thing. That was actually part more part of the See? script originally. See? And they cut yep. you out way more. There's a lot of like <sighs> the ending of the show. left on the yeah. on the cutting room floor. On this the episode. end of the episode was or originally a conversation between Jordy and Picard because the original conceit of the episode was that Riva actually loses this mechanical translator that lets him talk directly to his chorus, and oh. it was supposed to be like, oh, Riva has that, and Jordy has his visor one to one connection. And then oh. the re and then Jordy at the end talks to Picard and goes, "Man, what if I lost my visor? Will I be fucked up too?" And Picard goes, "Nah, man, you're cool." Yeah, no, but you change bum, laser eyes. Bum, bum, if you if you bum, take bum, the visor bum, off, bum, lasers bum. come out of your eyes. <laughs> um, so they cut to Riva, and Riva it looks like Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. like a, like the white version of Jesus. Uh, and he's got a majestic beard and he's got that eighties hair where it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how to describe it. Like it goes over the ear, which I hate. I, I he's, he's an Maxwell I, Lord from DC yeah. comics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he comes in he's got a sweet robe and he's like, he's fucking staring people down. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't like this dude. This guy rolls up to me like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking punch him. I'm gonna yeah, check you, him. You, you get ready to throw hands on this. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when he gets that close to fucking yeah. counselor. Oh fuck, dude! I remember this time. See, you guys helped. <laughs> you know, I started being with counselor, <laughs> counselor mm-hmm. Troy. Hey, uh, excellent. Uh, she she gets really close, and then and then he gives her a smile, a little smirk, like hey, baby. Yeah. Um, and then he goes back, and then. They're about to talk to him, and he's like, <laughs> he raises his hand, and he's like, no. And then they're like, oh, this is interesting. And and then these three, two dudes and a, and a lady come out. It's mm-hmm. like that movie, Three Men and a Baby. <laughs> um, but it's two dudes and a lady, and they're like, hey, we're the chorus. We talk for him, basically. And basically, you find out he's deaf. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's you later find out he it's like hereditary like mm-hmm. all his people like I guess he comes from royal blood they're all deaf but they have like these they this, inbred a lot so they lost yeah, fucking the ability yeah. well, look <laughs> white Jesus dude <laughs> um, so he's like hey uh, these people talk for me and like each one represents like an emotion like one of them is like lust and passion and then uh, the, the girls like balance and like warmth and then the other dude's like i forgot what the fuck he's like art i guess like warrior or something yeah well yeah. the warrior guy is the lust lust one because oh yeah well, i think one fighting is, they, are yeah. very close to each other dude yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. no yeah. the other guy is like the other guy like is the scholar like, like scholar yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 he called himself the scholar yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then so he, he he starts right away showing a lot of interest for D- uh counselor troy Mm-hmm. And he keeps staring at her, and and she gets very, very like uncomfortable. She's like, "Oh boy, I'm feeling feelings that I've never felt before since Theodore Bagwell." Um, <laughs> so she's feeling a little excited about it, a little curious about this dude, and mm-hmm. they're t- they're talking about how he, you know, he's brokered. Basically, this guy's like the negotiator. You know, mm-hmm. they send him in, and he fucking negotiates people off a ledge, or you know, warring Sam f- Jackson faction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're like, all right, well, you know, we're, we're, and, and he basically, <clears throat> he, there's a scene that you talked about, Dan, where like he, Picard's like talking to his interpreters and he's like, fuck you. You talk to me, you fuck. I'm <laughs> the guy you address. He didn't say it like that, but you could imagine I'm, I'm, you know, I like to have a couple. It was pretty forceful though. He, the, yeah, he definitely yeah. inserted himself. He's like, Hey, yeah. And so he's like, Picard is like, no, you're fucking right, dude. And what's weird is that Picard went on this away team. Mm-hmm, right. This mm-hmm. is the first time we've seen him go, and then and right and Riker stayed back. It's more of like a diplomatic meeting. That's why I guess so. I think yeah. And in fact, they discussed it in detail in the turbo lift, where like yeah, Riker's um, like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, Riker's like, I don't know if I, I should like. I'm covered with you leading this away team, and it's like it's not even a away team, man. It's it's like a ceremony. <laughs> yeah. And Picard has that weird line where he goes. Oh, cluck, 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 number one. And you're like, and the room's like, what the hell is <laughs> what the, that? The fuck? Why? The card's like, do, do you know what chickens are? Yeah. <laughs> do you ever eat fucking fried chicken? You want to, you think they eat fried chicken in space? Oh, God. They, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. they, they've replicated some sort many of a fried chicken. Like poplars or something. <laughs> many yeah. a fried poplar. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the most popular meal on the Enterprise is? Like, what, what, like, the, if you mm. talk to the computer, like the computer would be like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I got to make mac and cheese one more goddamn time, dude. <laughs> I'm going to well, kill myself. I, I think mad. it's <laughs> gah. <laughs> uh, Klingon gah. Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine it's um, everyone that has like a, like a stereotypical meal that they all like to eat. So well, like, like chow mein? Con- yeah. Well, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Now you got me so, about chow you know, mein, dude. Picard Sounds likes good. wants to eat beef bourguignon because he's French. You yeah. Know? Okay. Riker <laughs> wants like a cheeseburger. Miles O'Brien just wants potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. His wife Keiko, which we haven't met met yet, just wants like sushi. <laughs> Uh, it's all go. it's all racist. They all eat yeah. the racist stereotypes. Of okay. What does Deanna eat? Uh, I think she's Greek. She, she eats a lot, a lot of olive oil. Olive olive oil and hummus. It's all yeah. She yeah. Eats. yeah. <laughs> Just dip um, the hummus in olive oil and eat it. Yeah. Or Put what? Or, or beta zeds. What do beta zeds eat? Beta zoids. I, I forget what the fuck the planet is. The person beta zoid. Uh, olives. A lot of olives. She eats olives, dude. Yeah. Uh, we saw them eating, but yeah. it just looked like random crap. It, it, it looked, looked like, like salad. It, it looked, looked like, like a, shitty a, catering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. All right. Flat I was wondering. Provided by the 99 cent store. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so they, they, they bring in Reva to, to the Enterprise, and whew, the first thing I'm thinking about is, let's get Wesley the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want him, like, n- no communication between Wesley. Like, this guy's going to start <laughs> another intergalactic war, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He'll keep insulting him over and over again. Yeah. For- Every few episodes, I got to remind myself, oh, this guy's an intergalactic terrorist. <laughs> um <laughs> What's funny is that he literally shows up for like one shot and that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the first paycheck. He yeah. got paid for the whole fucking episode though. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they arrive and, and they're like, the Reva's like, Hey, be cool, man. Let me introduce oh. myself. Um, I like to party. And he's like, okay. He's like, uh, he, he's first. He says, I'm, I'm, it's my pleasure to be on board. I, I love this place. Now let's introduce myself to everybody. And then he's like, this is my first. Why is he number one? Why is he not number two? Because he's, he's, the, he's the first command, uh, the first officer. Yeah. Right. But but it's like first mate. I guess so. But but Picard's number one. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he, if there was a call sheet, number one, <laughs> Picard. You know what I mean? Well, he's, his, two, he's right his number one. I yeah. know. But how, does, does everybody go by rankings? Like does, Picard is the point of origin. Yeah. Because Deanna, Deanna Troy goes, you're my number one because you're my favorite lover. <laughs> but then I've uh, Data, I kind of want to sleep with. He's my number ten. Like it's like a like MySpace. Well, ranking. I think Picard's like like zero. He's prime. You know. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can get like, like, like computer grown. By the way, uh, even though Will Wheaton shows up in this episode, mm-hmm. uh, this is a random time where this is the first time apparently he met William Shatner. For some oh. reason, he was on set. And uh, apparently it went really poorly. Um, Shatner just kept making fun of him <laughs> the whole time. He's like, get yeah, piece of shit, dude. And, <laughs> that sounds about right for Shatner. Are you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you that asshole that was in fucking Stand By Me? You killed fucking, <laughs> you killed your, your older brother? No, he was, he's not my real older brother. He was just, it was just a movie. No, you killed fucking How John Cusack. How fucking dude. dare you? Yeah, how dare you kill America's sweetheart, John Cusack, you piece of shit. <laughs> No, no, he died in a car accident in the movie. I mean, first of all, he's not my real brother. No, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. you. It's first real. You take, first you take. <laughs> and then before you know it, Will Wheaton's eating a drop kick. I know, dude. <laughs> off the wall. Yeah, yeah, that he misses, but still hits him. Yeah. You know? And um, Picard, and, and not Picard, uh, Shatner's very hurt on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to show Ricardo that clip one day of, of, of William Shatner doing the drop kick. <laughs> Well, I, 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 so <laughs> spoiler alert, I, I guess when we go through these, maybe we'll go back to the first one. We don't know what, what comes after this, this show, but maybe we'll eventually do the original series, dude. Yeah. Right? We don't, yeah. We don't know for sure. We don't know. dude. Yeah. 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 There's I mean, it's, a it's, wide it's universe of Star off. Treks out there. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. so many options yeah. uh, to do. So, all right, back to this episode. Sorry for the detour. And he starts, Reva starts introducing himself to everybody. And he's he's like, hey, Riker, I love you, man. Love you, baby. And he puts his hand like over his heart. <sighs> and he's like, I, touching everybody. It's yeah, holy. he's touching everybody. And the, it's funny how we now we view everything with uh, under the eyes of like COVID. Like, oh my God. Even without COVID, I'm like, I don't want you to fucking, fucking touch me. I remember well, one time at, at the place where we worked, someone in the elevator like grab my shoulder to pull me back away from the door. And in my mind, I was like, don't fucking touch me. I almost socked you, dude. <laughs> you're like, you're not from the streets, my man. You better back the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so this, um, there's this guy who started touching me during a negotiation. I'd be like, get the mm-hmm. fuck off of me. This is all this custom. You're not my friend, dude. <laughs> I only really let data touch me like that, dude. And only when we're, Hopped up on drugs, dude. That's my um, purse. <laughs> so, so he's like, he goes to, he goes to Riker, and then he goes to Data, and he's like, "Oh, you're a magnificent creature. You're a beautiful thing." And he doesn't, he like, it, it, it's crazy how like he doesn't like, um, he doesn't talk down to Data. He doesn't like, mm-hmm. he he just says, "You're you're a unique thing." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Data and takes goes, it as a compliment. Yeah, it's a compliment. And then he goes to he goes to um to Jordy and he's like, hey, man, you got some cool glasses, dude. Yeah, he puts his uh, hands like right next yeah. to his head. It's a little weird. Yeah. And he's like, can you see this? What if I do this? <laughs> and he puts his middle finger up. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, no, I can't, I can't see your middle finger. But he basically says like, oh, it, it, what it boils down to is like, he asks him like, hey, if you take these visor offs, are, are you blind? And he's like, yeah, I'd be blind. 
And basically what, what they come up with, this, what this whole scene is about, is about how they you use what you have and you you make the best of it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sim- simple. Um, a, a, a thing that will come back up later. <laughs> yes. And so th- they like have a little like, connection. And even like Jordy like t- touches the Riva in, in like the chest. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's like, yeah, we do have these gifts and we're lucky. And so <clears throat> he's like, yeah. And Riva's like, well, I like to get escorted around the ship by this lady here. <laughs> and he, he, wa- he definitely wants to hang out with Counselor Troy. And only one of the, the interpreters goes. And it's the one, the passionate one. Of it's course, the dude. last one. The, yeah. the horniest <laughs> fucking guy, dude. He's like, and, and. Immediately, I got uncomfortable. What's like, funny is that dudes? he's like a boner personified. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. And but I was thinking, like, it, my mind went to like a dark place, and I was like, oh my god, this this interpreter is gonna fuck her, dude. Oh like, no, for for for, the, for Riva. Or, I don't like where this is going, dude. Or they always mm. do a three way. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, and like, like they I don't have like where to. This is going. Yeah, per their custom. <laughs> and then and then so so Picard's like, so what do we do with you two? Like what? What's happening? The, yeah, the, and it's weird because then, then the other two goes well. In times like this, we usually just get in the way. Yeah, <laughs> so they like, kind of understand what the fuck to do with yeah. ourselves. Look, you have like <laughs> a room that you can store us in. <laughs> yeah, he's like, do you have an empty room where we could sit down and rest? Is that a thing you guys have? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Calm down. Maybe eat some fried chicken if yeah. available. Yeah, we like a, a, a an, an old tiny bird, a, a, a flightless bird, and they're like, "Why the Do other guy have I, we understand, malt whiskey?" Yeah, yeah, we, we understand the other guy is deaf, but why are you guys signing at us like we're fu- we're fucking deaf? It's like, oh, we're sorry. Um, and then Worf seems like bothered by that. Ugh. Uh, I don't. You. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why he's. He's so bothered upset. a lot in this episode, and there's not yeah. a real good explanation in general, other than Worf is being really weird. Maybe he's got IBS, dude. And that's <laughs> a thing onto itself, dude. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. So then you have Riva and Counselor Troy. It always takes me a goddamn second to <laughs> get going. On that one. <laughs> you have Riva and Counselor <laughs> Troy and the pervert in the room, <laughs> the, and they're talking about the guy who watches. And- <laughs> I know, dude. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, this guy knows James Franco. Uh, oh, and no. then oh, <laughs> deep cut, dude. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so um, they're 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 talking in the room, and they're like, you know, um, they're, they're talking about how like they communicate and how like she's she's a, basically like how she can sense feelings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What's so cool about this episode? Not knowing that he's actually deaf is like. Every everything's working nicely. Like you're seeing the coverage is of like the how they filmed it. The coverage is of Riva, but Mm -hmm. you're hearing the interpreter's voice. Mm -hmm. And you're hearing like you're getting Riva's reaction. Yeah, and it's all well synced. Like it's well rehearsed. Very well blocked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's really well done. I will say that there's a lot of cheesy parts of this episode, but that part's really cool. Especially now knowing that he's actually a deaf actor. Mm -hmm. Really well done. And, I, and and before I knew he was he was uh, deaf, I thought, man, this actor is really good. Like he's really he's he's like he's emoting really well and stuff without. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. but now knowing this, uh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, they they basically have a connection. You could see right away, like there's something there. And but there's some there's some sort of hesitation with Counselor Troy this whole time that I right. keep, keep like seeing in her face. Well, but, I mean, this, there is like a horny guy just constant in the room. Yeah, like, that's what I was thinking. Like, can this we, guy's have, like, can we yeah. have something well, to eat? Like, like he, <laughs> you, you're, he, she's t- trying to make a connection with this guy, this yeah. space white Jesus. <laughs> and he, all she probably hears in her background is just his voice. Like, like oh, horny, so horny, horny, horny. <laughs> he's uh, really lucky. He's wearing a big yeah. flowing robe that hides yeah. his boner really well. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise. What do you mean? The really, guy's right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> erect yeah yeah and <laughs> standing and so and so <laughs> add attention they they let him be and then there's a there's a, like a conference in the in the conference room uh-huh. and it's basically about data kind of breaking down like who these people are like the both factions of so of the warring parties and he like reva's basically like ah, don't worry about it i got this dude yeah he's pretty cocky he's really cocky so dude. cocky 
Yeah. So cocky. And so he's like, cock. you know what? Uh, we're good. It, it won't be a problem. We'll figure this out. And, um, you know, these people are always fighting, but it'll be fine. And he basically leaves. He just walks out of the fucking meeting. <laughs> and, like, even Picard's like, well, I guess meeting adjourned. Gosh. And um, <clears throat> mostly who walks out is just Riva again. He, he's just horny shit, dude. This guy. Yeah, he's like, I have to go. I have a dinner I really need to get to. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And he winked really like, he, he was like, wait, we get it. You don't have to <laughs> wink, dude. <laughs> but yeah, and, and you see that all this knowledge that data keeps and, you know, you, later you'll, you'll, we'll, we'll bump into it again. But he, he leaves and then the, um, he, he wants to have the day with fucking Tiana Troy. He's got the hots for her, dude. He can't, he can't, can't hide it, dude. Mm. Not with that robe. <laughs> uh, and then they they basically leave, and they're gonna go have a, a dinner with with Tiana Troy. Mm-hmm. And they have a they have weird like guava juice. I mean, did you notice <laughs> all the things that are on that on that on that table? Yeah, it's, it's like, like a yeah, it's like a kind of like orangey reddish drink. It's yeah, kind of weird. And then it's just a bunch of fruit, and that seems to be it. <laughs> yeah. whatever yeah. it is. It's probably Kern's brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from it went down to the Costco and yeah, grabbed it's a bunch. Kirkland. Yeah, and then they're having that this guy dinner. Will sign anything. Yeah, and he and he's like he's eating like um they're both eating like like a pudding. Yeah, or some sort of sauce and <laughs> by itself. It's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird fucking space food. Deanna <laughs> Troy looks like she's eating crystals. Not really. <laughs> um, and so what's so cool is that like at one point. Like basically, like she's she's having this. She's trying to make this connection with with Riva, and at one point, like she's like, "Oh, I look forward to when we can communicate on our own." And mm-hmm. not basically, and he and then he he basically the, the interpreter goes away, dude. Yeah, and he's and he they're kind of like he's kind of signing, and but he's she's also feeling him, like feeling the feelings that he's feeling. It's it's a really well done scene, and it's a, it's a great con- primer for what'll happen. Like this is great foreshadowing in terms yeah, of like yeah, the thing yeah, he needs true. to do. Yeah. Yeah. So then the, then they have this, this, this talk and they're connecting and then back on the bridge, <laughs> this just proves that we'll never have good cell phone coverage and never because <laughs> they, they, they get, they get a signal from both of the, the factions and it's a shitty fucking signal. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like zoom now. Like they're like, <laughs> are you guys there? Give us a signal that you guys are there. And you're like, Only Rah. one's in the room right now. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to wait till then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arf. and they, they get a scrambled ass signal i've i've pirated porn that's better, better quality than this fucking futuristic fucking facetime and they, they look really weird these people and they have a horrible reception and they're like we only want to talk to reva you're basically violating the rules we're not supposed to deal with anybody but reva and apparently like reva is like this big negotiator like i said mm-hmm. uh, and he's like all right so find fucking reva dude bring him in here picard says and they bring him up and they bring him in and he, he, he is cocky as shit, dude. He comes in and he's like, dude, don't worry. I get in there, dude. Boom, boom. Deal's done, dude. I'm going to, I'm going to sell them a fucking brand new Subaru. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's that cocky. Dude. Uh, negotiate peace. And on the way out, yeah, I'm going to sell off my old car. I don't want anymore. Yeah. <laughs> How much do you guys want for my old Saab? It, it doesn't run. But um, uh, they don't really make the so, parts anymore. But, yeah, um, the so. company went out of business. I have a Kia <laughs> and I have a Daewoo. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, I want so, this bird cage I found in your trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so they're like, so like, basically, they're like, hey, uh, this whole time, by the way, they're they're fighting. They're still fighting. They, there's like laser wars happening. <laughs> war. Yeah, literally laser wars. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking lasering the shit out of them, dude. It's like a rave. It's like an Eastern European rave, dude. <laughs> lasers. And so basically Riva's like, and let's just beam us up there. You guys gotta be fucking calm, be cool, and then uh and then we're gonna be there. And this scene feels a lot like <laughs> this scene feels a lot like Boogie Nights. You know that scene where they go to uh, Alfred Molina's house? And oh, I haven't seen it in a long time. Sh- oh my god, the guy's lighting fireworks. That's how this feels like. They're like they're like, no, we don't want to make a deal when those dudes show up. But anyway. <laughs> They get beamed down down there, and I notice that they go to transporter uh, room five. I, I'm curious to know how many there are and which one Statham works at. 
I, I'm thinking this guy, he works, if they're 69, he works in the 69. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many transporter rooms there are, but I, I suspect. he's Well, he's, he's the first transporter. So. Yeah, well, he gets his first, he gets dibs. On yeah, so he's he, probably he a picks. transporter one, if anything. I but but five is fucking Miles O'Brien. Yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> so they get, they get transported and they're like in the, they're like on a cliff, dude. It's windy as shit. And then Riva starts making all these demands. He's like, I want fucking a table this high, dude. It's got to be stone, dude. If it's not stone, I send it back. And <laughs> I want two torches, three sided table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I need a thirty sided dice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, for what? And they're like, don't ask questions, dude. So then they are trying to make get that for him. And these two factions show up, right? And they're not, they're ugly people, dude. They're, <laughs> they One look, of them has a piece of their skull showing through their skin. Yeah, you know? dude. It's like, they look like the guy from Robocop when he gets the acid on him. Oh, yeah, 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 that, sure. yeah, right? oh, yeah. And then the other guy shows up and they look like, they look like, they look they like look toxic like, Avengers with hair. Yeah. <laughs> they also look like, um, like Norman Bates's mom. After she had been there for years. Oh, yeah, desiccated for years. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and he's like, hey, hey, calm down, guys. Be cool. Be at ease. We're going to fi- figure this out. And then one of those dudes, one of those ugly looking fuckers is like, I hate peace. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Tybalt. I fucking hate the Capulets. <laughs> I hate the Montagues. I hate everybody. And he's like, but you are a Capulet. Fuck you. And he shoots, dude. And he uh, shoots. Yeah, yeah. And Riker fucking is on it and he's he takes reva moves him out of the way and their guns are fucking violent as shit dude these lasers that i was making fun yeah. of earlier they're powerful yeah they, they're they like are. the ark of the covenant they, they turn like, into yeah, fucking basically. skeletons and you yeah. see there's flesh burning off and you're like yeah, holy you get a shit temporary body worlds exhibit it's kind of like um that that acid from uh the rock yeah yeah, 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 yeah. a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking crazy man but instant you know you, yeah. and they don't have the the thing to just shoving their chest, dude, like yeah, yeah. In cage. Yeah. Um, but the effects are pretty cool. Like yeah, the effects yeah. of like them, like evaporating, are pretty awesome. Yeah, and pretty gnarly for network television. It's I know it's not dude. as gnarly as when they blew their guy's head off, right? But no, it's no. still pretty pretty gnarly because yeah. So yeah, you not- got meaty skeletons on screen. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like Mortal Kombat Nine style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so one of those ghouls shoots uh, the interpreters. All three of them. I don't know yeah. how he gets all three of them with one shot. That's still I don't understand. Strong like laser. Strong it's laser. a. It's he's like wanted. He it's fucking a plot curbs the laser. laser. <laughs> curbs the laser. And then uh, the laser. His, his partner is like, "Fuck you! You don't speak for us." And he shoots him, and he's like, "Fuck this guy!" And then surprisingly, the two factions are like, "Oh, that's cool, Pete. Let's cool. We're cool little Fonzies here." <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, and they calm each other down. Which and is then surprising, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Riva and and they're like so ready Worf. for peace, dude. <laughs> yeah, and and how do they not shoot each other? How do they not go? Hey, we're the leaders of these two groups. Let's just fucking shoot each other, dude. And they're like, oh, no, let's all go our separate ways. Let's agree to disagree for this one. Uh, and they they go their ways, and they go up there, and fucking Riva's pissed at shit dude like he's not only pissed because they killed his interpreters and he doesn't he can't communicate now but he also lost his friends is what it right. comes down to so reva's like fucking signing up a storm and like he's like fuck this fuck you fuck everybody fuck those peace seekers fuck everybody take me back home in complete I'm so silence fucking mad. yeah and he's just it's all sign language and even uh counselor troy is like trying to calm down he's like slow down I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to understand what you're saying but i don't understand just slow down and he can't he's like so, he's fuming he's like a whirling dervish <laughs> um and he's pissed as shit dude and so picard's like hey we're in this together dude and he gives him like the solidarity solidarity like handshake and he's like hey we're in this together and yeah. he was like nah fuck that dude yeah. take me home so uh so the, actually but, this is this is gonna be a slight tangent because this led me down shit. a slight rabbit hole as oh. i was so so first of all i'm gonna play the clip that's actually picard responding to reva and yeah so here it is data he knows some kind of gestural language find out which one and learn it i sir counselor take him to sick bay maybe pulaski can help Listen to me. You are not alone. Do you understand? We are all in this together. Now. 
Okay, so first of all, he, he Picard, he can't listen to you. He's deaf. Second yeah. of all, uh, why are you yelling, Picard? <laughs> yeah. your voice, yeah. you idiot. Why are you yelling? He's right there, and also he's deaf. Yeah. And second, um, the the performance kind of came off to me as suspect. I was like, my instinct kicked in, and I was like, hmm, I feel like Patrick Stewart's overacting here. I don't feel like this is as written. And in fact, it reminded me of that scene from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire where Dumbledore yells at Harry. Gary, yeah. did you put your name on the Goblet of Fire? In the movie, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. then you read the book. In the book, Dumbledore calmly tells Harry, asks Harry, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? It's just the actor chose to do a completely different performance for some reason. Yeah. And I wondered if this was the same thing. So I tracked down the production script for <laughs> this episode. I looked up the exact line, and this is this is the exact line in the production script. Picard sees the panic in his face, tries to reassure him, you are not alone. We will solve this together. <laughs> so, so <laughs> maybe the, it was the director. Uh, maybe George Lucas directed this episode, and he's like, faster and more intense. Yes. And he's like, he's like, oh, I'll do this, George. I'll do this for you. And he's, and he's like, you're not understanding. This is our 39th take. Faster <laughs> and more intense. And he's like, but I, that's what I've tried. And finally uh, he was like, well, fuck it. Th- th- we're in this fucking together. <laughs> <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> it's not in the script, but listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, because why would they put in the script? Listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> as, soon, as soon as as soon as they came, they came back from Reva's planet, picking up Reva, they should have told fucking immediately. You go, Data? Start learning all this. We need a backup. Yeah. <laughs> just right away. Yeah. Also, yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. I have to, I have to bring this up every goddamn episode, dude. Yeah. I'm on the ship. I question everybody. <laughs> Nothing is safe. Everyone's got diseases. Yeah. And everyone's trying to fuck me. So I go, <laughs> dude, data, find out, find out how to sign, dude. And then <laughs> try to see if you could read these fuckers, dude. Like, tell me if they're lying. Cause to be honest, when this episode started, I thought it was going to go a very different way. So what did you, my okay, prediction, I also did too. What did you think? I thought that he wasn't really like, like they were pretending they weren't saying the truth the mm-hmm, interpreters, mm-hmm. and they were their own. Uh, they were like a, a, a quorum of like people like, like they were pulling the strings basically. Mm. And so, they were so I thought, up, yeah, yeah. I, I thought something similar where he's actually a decoy and the real negotiators are these three people. Oh, and then they kill they kill the real people, and now they just an, and just now he's like, I'm left. a fraud. I actually don't know how to negotiate at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, 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 yeah. That's that. That is very interesting. Now that yours sounds better than mine. I just, <laughs> I, I, mine. I just question everybody. I was like, everybody's fucking. <laughs> well, well, well it is a little other. suspicious because no one, because yeah. you, you start off suspicious because apparently no one knew this at the beginning. Yeah. Right. So you do come off as like, that's weird. Then yeah. how does this all work? Sort of thing. Yeah. So, so um, my thought was like, oh, they're pulling the strings and they're the kind of the power mm-hmm. behind everything. And they're, they're even lying about what he's saying. Like he could, he could be saying like, no, this isn't right. And they'll just make out whatever they want. They're like, oh yeah, he's mm-hmm. saying that. He fucking hates you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, back to the episode. And then at this point, what Data should have done a long time ago is that he learned sign languages. He learns all yep. these kind of different kinds of sign languages. And then they take they take Riva to the doctor to see if they could fix him. <laughs> and the doctor's like, yeah, I can't just stick him with a needle. Well, you know, like I usually do when I'm not doing my job. <laughs> uh, and I, we really have to think about this because we can't, we can't figure this out. We can't right. fix him. We have to find another way. And then Data comes in and he's like, hey, I learned all these languages. I'm ready to go. And uh, he starts he starts naming all these different languages. And he's like, blue sea, walking in a blue sea. And I thought that was like, the most funniest <laughs> scene ever. <laughs> he was like, see if you say two people walking on a blue sea. And then you could add a sunset to that. Two people walking <laughs> on a blue sea on a sunset on a beautiful morning while they have to go pee. <laughs> and like he keeps Sitting adding to the dock thing. of the bay. Yeah. And Twitter yeah. beetles fight with yeah. the pals in a bottle and a puddle yeah. and a <laughs> yeah. and the poodles eating noodles. 
<laughs> he's like, he's like, see, I could do this all day. And oh, also, I, I'm sorry that that um that sequence where they're doing sign language, <laughs> yeah. and you see the 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 hands on the screen. Oh yeah. Why, why does every gesture look like a sex innuendo thing? Oh yeah. It's like a when finger he, going like, faster, into another faster, faster, <laughs> faster. Yeah. And it's funny is that so, it just loops like the same like I, six or so. Yes. Well, yeah. And it just makes faster. faster and These faster. are probably yeah. But one is like an X and a finger is going in the X. The other yeah. is like a, a pinky going up and a finger goes into the pinky and it's yeah. just like it's faster little, and more when, intense <laughs> yeah well well when you're looking at them individually and they're not going fast mm -hmm. they're fine they look normal you look like normal yeah, sign language yeah, right. but when they, he speeds them up they look really dirty uh, <laughs> and i was like i don't like this i don't like because it kind of looked like a gif you know <laughs> yeah it yeah, started yeah. looking like a gif and he was like and it's like you know <laughs> making the fucking <laughs> sign <laughs> yeah yeah and so look at cars like yeah dude we got to dude let's go talk to reba dude you <laughs> are a genius why don't they have data to solve every problem? <laughs> so th that's that's one thing about data, which is like kind of uh, a storytelling crutch, is that he can kind of do everything. Yeah. <laughs> My thing is like, is he, data's alcohol. He's the source of and the and the solution to all of the enterprise's problems. Mm -hmm. I would be like, <laughs> number one, you're in a member three now. And number <laughs> one is data now. And then data would just solve every problem that we had. Oh, yeah. these people are okay. Solve the data, and then he'd be like, "Okay, we could give them cold fusion by doing this, 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 and that." All done. Okay, now quick question because I'm actually legit curious about this because I'm ignorant of what it's actually like. Is it just ASL? I am not sure. I don't think it is. I think they invented a slightly different version. Variation. Yeah, yeah. variation. Because I know that at least his gesture of thank you to Deanna is ASL. I I think it's a variation. Um, as far as I, I, I didn't do that much research into it. Um, okay. Cause I would like to know because I, I, it would just be funny. It's like, oh, this, you know, alien language. Exactly. That's why I was like, <laughs> I don't think it's just ASL. Cause they would have been like, oh yeah, it's ASL. It's fucking. <laughs> yeah. But it was, was also like 89. Yeah. Uh, that's also a possibility where people were like, people are deaf. Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, back in 89, like. Th those sorts of things were uh, surprisingly invisible. I guess so. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. One, one thing that we glossed over and then we didn't really discuss is like, are th they're not like Deanna Troy, right? Like they're not, they're not like precogs or whatever she is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not, um, it's not well, that well explained why they're linked. Yeah. How they're linked. And the thing Maybe I thought it's like that thing, like the avatar thing. <laughs> like they put their ponytails in his butt all yeah, right in his ass, all three. Yeah, and they're and like, like, we're now oh, linked forever. Oh. Now we're linked together forever. I, I I thought the thing that would come up is that, remember the very first episode, Encounter of Farpoint, um, you know, Deanna talks telepathically with Riker. Yeah. And it's yeah, because yeah. they made like a connection. Oh, yeah. yeah I thought yeah, the whole, yeah. I thought that that would, that's, that would be what's happening here where, because they make yeah. a connection, um, you know, they start talking telepathically that wouldn't work because the actor is deaf. So yeah, I guess so. I guess so, so I guess that's why they avoided it that way because then you'd kind of have to get a fill in voice for him, which, you know, may not be great because yeah. you know, he's actually deaf. So yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it, and then surprisingly Riker wasn't pissed that, that this guy showed a lot of, affection. yeah, he's, he's, he's chill this episode. He's not being yeah. frat boy Riker. He's being, he's not like, fuck you, dude. You don't touch her, dude. She's the beard's, my lady. The beard's keeping him yeah. in check a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Maybe I think so. It wasn't fully grown in the child. Now it's a little bit more grown. He's a little less yeah. like, you know, freaked that's out. True. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, in this episode, he kind of doesn't give a crap. Yeah. He's like, you want her? Take her. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and so there, he's communicating through data now. And he's basically like, I can't do this deal. Like I'm too distraught. Um, and I can't communicate. Like you're, I don't know why they're communicating perfectly fine. I don't know why he can go like, hey, let's broker this thing and get the fuck out of here. Like it, I think part of it is his confidence is shaken. And the other part yeah. is just that, like, I guess he really depends on the nuance of his chorus yeah, interpreting yeah. it, like the emotion of it. And yeah, data yeah. just doesn't have that. But data is like, data is like word for word. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he wants two tacos, <laughs> but, it, but, but he really means is like, I want two tacos, but with salsa, hold the fucking onions, dude. Cause onions make me fucking gassy. Yeah. Yeah. But, 
We didn't get it's, the nuance of yeah. the hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I want the green one, not the red one, because the red one gives me the runs. Um, <laughs> and so, he, so like they're trying to get them to like broker peace, and he's having nothing, nothing of it. And what's crazy is, oh, then we cut to this the scene with Jordy trying to get a fucking eye surgery, like fucking Comes out minority, of nowhere <laughs> minority report, and he's like. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing if they can make anything in the replicator and 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 damn, and they can make anything on the holodeck make another Jordy that has eyes <laughs> cut those dudes eyes out and put them in Jordy done <laughs> <laughs> well i mean th- i mean that's, that's a that, viable like method like that's you also could- what she's kind of actually suggesting she's saying we can use replicator technology to kind of give you new eyes yeah and it's not like you have to generate a whole Jordy either no, like, we should, uh, should do it though. We should do it just so we can kill that guy. <laughs> so we can do it like, cruelly. Oh, why was I yeah. created to feel <laughs> pain? <laughs> yeah. For your eyes, Jordy yeah. clone. It's for your yeah. eyes. We need it to make now. sure the nerves are working so and that they'll open react. And then pain. they make a sideshow that's kind of like the island. Like by Michael <laughs> Bay. Huh? But it's all uh, Michael Bay back around. We really needed that. Yeah. Yeah. We needed to close that loop. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you saved it, Ricardo. Thank God. <laughs> so then Jordy's like, "So you're saying you can you you can fix this?" And and my thing is like, if I was Jordy, I was like, "Why didn't you tell me this earlier, you stupid idiot? You tell me you could help me." I'm well, walking it's, around it's, here. My well, visor at night. I can't find my visor when I wake up in the morning. Yeah, um, I feel like she would have been like, "Oh, you have a visor. You know, I've solved two of these before." <laughs> yeah, yeah. ought to be like one of the first things she ever said to him. It also confirms <sighs> that P- Pulaski is far more competent than Crusher. Because yeah, in the first episode true. where Crusher, the very first episode, Crusher meets Jordy and she's like, well, I could like try a different thing. That's all I got, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, she she couldn't snap like two super bugs. Yeah, yeah. She, but whereas uh, Pulaski question, is like, I can make more, you new eyes. <laughs> the more time goes by, the more I hate fucking stupid ass fucking Beverly Crusher. <laughs> She's not even on screen, and we're <laughs> yeah, you, you hate that whole family. Yeah. Well. Yeah, dude. I'm glad it's fucking, a bad family. <laughs> I'm glad Wesley's dad died. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't deserve a dad. Um, uh, well, it's so, a mercy for him. He's like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, deal with this I'd fucking space myself, Mozart and deal with this fucking idiot, dude. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what do you guys they, make of that expression Dr. Pulaski had as Jordy walked away from that yeah, scene? It's a little weird. It was a weird smile she yeah. had. All I can think of is that she's like, I'm holding, camera's holding on me. I can't turn because <laughs> camera's yeah. on my face. So, I got to yeah. do some sort of expression. Yeah. So, I'll smile. And <laughs> you, think, you think he's like, <laughs> you think, or, or she's like, well, he's under. <laughs> I'm gonna get him naked and see what's going on. Or she's like, I'm gonna give him laser. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give him yeah. It's gonna yeah. be fucking she's sick. Just secretly <laughs> plotting. She's like, I'm like gonna that give him doctor from Arrested <laughs> Development. <laughs> just- <laughs> I'm gonna give him the sickest laser eyes, man. Yeah. He's not gonna even know he's got them. He's, I'm gonna give him ba- I'm gonna give him baby eyes. <laughs> I'm going to give it a Marcana yeah. and activate and you'll have a big laser eye. Yeah. So, so then back to, back to Riva. And so Deanna Troy comes back and he's like, Hey, yeah. So I'm going to go down there and try to broker peace. And my thing is like, why do we care about the stupid people, dude? Let them kill each other. You know? I mean, they're Uber, right? That was what yeah. they were doing. Uber. If you get to, if you Uber driver gets to the location, and it turns out it's a couple and they're having an argument. The Uber driver doesn't step in after the drive no, is over. He, he just go, drives off. Yeah, he's, he's like, like I gotta go. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a chicken in this fight. I'm out. <laughs> Rate me five stars. Go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah and like, and so they're like, they're like, oh, we have to step in and fucking figure this out. And he, and she's basically like, Do you have any tips? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, why Deanna? Yeah. Why yeah. not Picard? Or data. Who has like all this information and can figure it out, dude? And he's super fucking strong. So if he got attacked, he'd be fine, probably. Yeah. You know? Then they can't vaporize him because he doesn't have any skin or bones. <laughs> Look, and they're in fact, trying to give Deanna an episode. Just, just, just go with it, okay? That's true. Right, that, that, that's basically <laughs> what's going on. But, but in fact, in the actual original script, uh, Worf directly says out loud, "Pick uh, uh, Captain, you should broker." 
<laughs> peace treaty. Yeah. Once, yeah. once really? Riva drops out, and then Picard goes, "No, they don't want me. They want Riva." And no one even looks at Deanna. <laughs> He's like, don't, don't look at her. Don't look at her. She's not an officer. Uh, so, so Riva's. So Deanna Troy's like, so tell me, give me some tips. And basically, he's like, fine, fuck it. And he's like, okay. He's like, hold on to your pants. Fuck it. He's like, this is what you do is you turn their weaknesses into like, like a a positive thing. You, 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 you turn it around, you idiot. And then, and then she basically yells, though, why don't you fucking do that? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Basically, she yells at him and says, why aren't you doing this? And then, like, if he had never thought of this, he's like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, shit. Oh, oh yeah. I can do it. Look, what the fuck? Oh, what just God. happened? And he's My like, guitar is this. hoisting me. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, you're negotiating me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You fixed me. Um, I've become the negotiatee. Yeah. <laughs> All the tables have turned. Uh, and uh, But it's funny how she literally yells at him. Uh, yeah, There's a lot of yelling. Yeah. Like Picard yeah. grabbing Riva's face, yelling at his face. He can't hear him. Not just because he's deaf, but also as he's grabbing his face, he's covering his ears, so he couldn't have heard him otherwise. Yeah. And then Troy yelling, Riva's basically yelling, just do sign, you know? (laughs) It's a lot of yelling. And basically he's like, here's a secret. Take a disadvantage and make it an make it an advantage. That's it. That's how simple it is. And he's like, Well, then why don't you fucking do it, you bitch? (laughs) And he's like, Oh, okay. That you you make it and he's like, Oh, he's fucking shocked. He's like, Oh, Lord. And then Data's like, I could have told you that earlier, but <laughs> I, the, episode, I, the episode would be done if I had told you. Earlier. Data's like in my mind. I've already yeah. solved the uh, problem. Yeah, we've we I've I've already simulated the, the negotiations. I just yeah. need to recreate them down the planet. I mean, he's been standing there this whole time, yeah. even though they try to angle this as like Deanna's like win. Like Data helped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Data's like, I'm Data helping. was necessary. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then like, and then, and then Riva says something and then, and then kind of tries like, Data, I got this. But she, 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 she did the signal a little too low, like to his waist. And mm. I, and I felt like it's in the moment, like she was trying to reach and say like, I got this and reach back. But the actor was like, oh God, I'm, I'm not sure than I thought. And she almost touched his crotch, I thought. <laughs> like, mm. um, uh, and, and then she's like, oh, she's like, oh, she notices and she moved, she, she composes herself. <laughs> and then she's like, no, I got this data. Don't worry. And then Riva leans in for just a little kiss on the cheek. Mm. And she, and he thanks her for, you know, opening his eyes. And then he thanks data and data does another joke. Another funny ass joke, dude. He's mm-hmm. a funny guy, dude. He doesn't need fucking Joey Bishop or whoever the fuck was in the last episode. Um, Joey Bishop. <laughs> he he basically says, "Oh, thank you," and he's like, "Oh, thank me," and it's really funny. And even even Riva's like, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> that was funny." And so they Reminds go me back of my down. Course. <laughs> yeah. And so they head back down, and he's like, "All right," and he starts his demands again. He gets cocky right away again. Yeah. He he had been humbled when his when his Chorus died, but now he's like, I'm back. I'm back on top, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm the top negotiator. And he's like, I need the fucking table. I need uh, Settlers of Catan so we can play <laughs> in this table. <laughs> and, and now and I'm all about this sign language shit. Check yeah. this out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. I'm going to teach like, them sign language and it's going to be great. He, and he's like, we're going to teach them sign language and then we're gonna, they're going to they're gonna sign to each other and they're going to be friends because we did this activity together. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to be here forever. I'm I gonna, can't tell you. <laughs> I'm going to hold an icebreaker activity for the next five years. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, yeah. it's going to be awesome. It's a trust exercise. Won't the leaders eventually be like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> yeah. can we- we've been here forever. And, and then they're going to be so upset. They're going to kill him. They're going to be like, you know what? We're going to kill Riva, dude. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, let's agree to kill this guy. <laughs> and then we'll be friends together. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what? That's dude, a long play. Yeah. 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 We're sick of this fucking. <laughs> yeah. We're sick of learning sign language. It's so fucking hard. Especially with our weird monster our hands. hands are deformed and <laughs> fucked up. We yeah. can barely hold our weapons, yeah. let alone yeah. create. Our- Intricate signals with our yeah. fingers. Our we can't do don't trust bend falls. That way. We're busy holding guns. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh, so no. basically, they leave him there with with no time frame of like when he's going to be done with this. 
Yeah, yeah. Not just no time frame, but also like no supplies. Nothing. No clear, certain, Nothing like, like I don't see a transmitter. He can like, he's like, know, I'm going to contact you. And it's like, how oh, motherfucker? Yeah. Can't or talk. Like, can you You're like give him like by a, rocks? Can you also yeah. like maybe give him like a shuttle craft in case like he no. wants to leave or like <laughs> he's a like, weapon. When I need one to leave, I'm going to burn this planet down so you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, and then like, you know, I'll no set up food, a no shelter. Yeah. He'll just yeah. stay on top of this fucking yeah. mountain, I guess. I and guess maybe so maybe that's his opening gambit whenever it comes to negotiations. It's like you have to pity me. <laughs> both of you guys. Yeah. You and have like, to provide you know, me some stuff. Maybe, now. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, maybe they will provide him stuff, but what if their food's shitty? You know? And, yeah. like, and also risk he's willing and he didn't, to take. And he also didn't do any research. What if he can't eat their food? You know? Yeah. Who doesn't fucking know? What if he's fucked? And he's like, oh shit, I've made a horrible mistake. Um, I can only negotiate for a max of like a few days before I die. <laughs> you know, like yeah, he he's probably a fraud. <laughs> That's <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. funny, funny because I as I read the script. Funnily enough, there's a scene where Picard just outright calls him a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> he's like you're i mean they coward. set him up to seem that way though right well it's they, like, he calls him a fraud because like oh just because you can't talk through your chorus anymore you're a fucking fraud and he's like uh, well you know i can't talk so like his abilities as a as a peace negotiator like are suspect by the end of the episode yeah it's not like that, the moment of truth where he's really supposed to pull through and everything, his plan kind of sucks. Yeah. 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 Ma- like, like imagine like doing that in a here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like try to negotiate a peace deal in our world. Yeah. By saying, especially hey, everyone, when let's, he... all learn, let's all learn pigeon or something. <laughs> yeah. Especially when he first like, <laughs> like at first he seems to have like a, a grander, like, perspective of these conflicts like it's always over something tangible it's and he like you know trivializes like our earthly possessions and things like that you know right right where, yeah where it's like you know this is all over guys, material bullshit yeah and i need to find something in common so you guys yeah. can relate to each other as humans <laughs> <laughs> all right uh and that's the end of the episode basically they're like hey we figured that out Pff, done and done we don't have to worry about reva until he calls us when's he gonna call us how he's gonna do it we don't know but he's going to be really nice with. to get like one of those like updates at like the end of a restaurant impossible or a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we all was killed by a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> Reba was <laughs> killed two, four, yeah. four hours later. <laughs> four hours later after his settled like a tan game. When it turns out this related wildlife. Yeah. It turns out <laughs> this planet's really fucking dangerous and you should yeah. have had some he, sort of safe, like safety precautions built Reba in. Reba starved to death after 15 days. <laughs> Yeah. Turns out their diet. They was didn't really... know he was back. <laughs> yeah. They didn't. They didn't <laughs> know that. Yeah, uh... they, they never showed up. <laughs> they like, turns out he was diabetic. They and... knew he was there. <laughs> yeah, he said. He said, "Light the torches. That's how they'll know I'm back." They're and tiny, these, and he's they're surrounded by rocks. Dangerous. Yeah, yeah. These dank yeah. ass torches. I gotta he's find like, nobody. <laughs> he's like, turns out he was diabetic, and their their food base is all sugar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they and they have no basically. they have no sources of insulin. So no, no. Um, it's such a sugary planet that you're inhaling sugar at all times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more sugar. <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah. Uh. That's the, the episode. Look, it was fairly wonky and funny, but I, I I like what they were trying to say. But like you said, it seemed like. It was two scripts put together. It seemed yeah, like the core idea of what's going on is good. I think it's just a messy script. I feel Very like messy. the guy working on this episode, the the lead writer on this episode, was like, "What does it do Friday? All right, I'll, I'll get to work on it on Thursday." <laughs> <laughs> and well, then he like went out partying, and so he, he turned in like this half ass fucking script. And they're like, "Fucking Tim, dude, why yeah. is he? Or why are we still?" He's like, oh, "He's he's uh, he's a nephew. He's uh, Cotton <laughs> Berry's nephew." <laughs> And uh, he fucked it up, dude. Well, well, to be fair, like 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 I said, uh, the actor um, Howie Sego kept wanting to um, do changes up until days, be- the day before shooting things, scenes, scenes, and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I think that's why it's a bit disjointed. It's also disjointed because you have that weird Geordie thing right in the middle. Yeah, and uh, that's because um, like uh, that look- initial exchange between uh, Ravi and uh, Geordie, or uh, sorry, Riva. <laughs> 
Not Robbie. Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, between Riva and Jordy, like it makes so much more sense with the context you provided where he yeah. like, he centers so much ab- upon his like visor and that device and what it means to him and how he feels about it. Like that would resonate so much more if he too had a mechanical. Yeah. Like, well, that's because know, they shot that scene and then it turns out they don't use a mechanical thing anymore. So they had to reshoot <laughs> it probably. Because yeah. they did it without it, yeah. uh, or know. or they just shot it as written without really modifying it. I don't know. It it, it just it, it would make a lot more sense in that original version, that particular scene. Yeah, and you know, and also the the visor thing in the middle where Pulaski's talking about it, that only was in there because Lavar Burton wanted to stop wearing the visor. That makes sense too. He wanted to be able to act with his eyes, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that um, visor, like, uh, just just so everyone knows, it's not like LeVar can actually see out that thing. It's really difficult. It, it's it, just it, an yeah. obstruction to his vision. Yeah, it has a bunch of gaps in it that does let him see through it barely, but it's like looking through, like, a really thick screen door. It's like He's got predator vision when he wears it. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's, it's so... It it's was like, like looking through a cardigan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was just like, can I, can I give a reason to stop wearing this? So that's why they brought this up, but, you know... Uh, if you use spoilers, he guess he's forced to wear it the whole series. So the guy who the the guy who plays the artist translator, mm-hmm, mm. um, he's in a bunch. He's a character actor, and he's been a, in a bunch of shit uh, that you know him from stuff. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Um, which would it, well, well, the the chorus is made up of um, Marnie Mosman, Thomas mm-hmm. Oglesby, and Leo Damien. So uh, Leo Damien, no, uh, sorry, the Orzerman person. Randy hmm. or Randy Randy Orton, yeah, <laughs> Randy Orton, yeah, that's it. He was in a bunch of movies. He's, he, I, I, after I saw his picture, because he looks really young in the Star Trek episode, but once I saw him uh, older, I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen him in a bunch of movies. Wait, Randy? Huh? There's Randy. there's there's Randy. no one named Randy in the cast for this episode. Randy Almsby. He plays a scholar in the oh, art. Oh, Thomas. Well, he's, 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 he's credited as Thomas Oglesby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's his middle name, Randy. Randall. Yeah. Oh, Randy likes Randy parties, dude. Oh, interesting. And he's like, I can't oh. get jobs as Randy. They they think I party too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I I would if we're doing ratings, I would rate this show this episode, sorry, not the show. I'll rate this episode. Look, I didn't hate it. I, I hated certain parts of it, but not overall. Uh, I'm gonna give it a, a six and a half star. Oh, okay. Shows. Okay. How about you, Dan? Uh, yeah, I'm hovering between six and a half and a seven. I'll split the difference. 6.7. Okay. You can't do that, dude. You can't do that. We got to do quarters, No, 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 dude. no. Okay. One dollar. <laughs> uh, get fucked, everyone. Uh, uh, I'll do two dollars then. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. <you. laughs> this is why you should never do one dollar on the second uh, one. Uh, I wonder if there's ever been a Price is Right where someone said one dollar, two dollar, three dollar, four dollar, and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, that, that probably actually from a strategy point makes no sense at all to start no, if you're the no. first person <laughs> yeah but a you're dollar. at the start guessing yeah. a dollar is the dumbest thing you can do yeah 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 literally then, everyone can be better than you <laughs> yeah but anyway i put um I'll, I'll give it like seven seven starships just because uh i i think the core idea of it is is a really good idea it's just too bad that they were rewriting it as they were shooting it and it yeah, made it yeah, a little the issues messy. are just how performances are messy good. It is. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm yes, kind of yes. happy also that Deanna Troy is central to the plot in a way that's actually meaningful. Yeah, not in like a mm-hmm. stupid way. Like, like the you know. I mean, uh, granted, it still had to like uh, initiate off of Horny Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. It was you know it, by the end of it, it like it got around. But, to, like, but it wasn't give her something it, to do. Like, like, yeah, that was the initiation, but it didn't follow through based on a romantic relationship. It followed through right, just right, right, based right. on like a, basically she just needed advice. I don't want to do. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess because it's like, well, the, the victory of hers is to get him back in the saddle rather than take the torch from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that was ultimately. That's her victory. Yeah. And in the original version of the script, it was actually all Picard doing that. So they actually rewrote it to have Deanna doing it. Which I think oh, was a good move. 
that is a good move considering, you know, the rest of the screen time she has with him earlier in the sh- in the episode. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that, that ended up yeah, being they a good move. establish it over time. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good through line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, was the fuck this episode? Loud as a whisper. That's what that was called. <laughs> I these, said these, this earlier before we hit record, but I keep reading it as careless whisper. <laughs> careless as a whisper. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh man. But, yeah, these these titles they're a little difficult sometimes just cuz they're not like said in the episode or do you think it's just like No. Cuz like what does loud as a whisper mean? It's I don't know. It's, it's quieter than a fart. <laughs> hmm. Uh the next episode is The Schizoid Man. Um which is a very interesting episode involving data. So, that will be You know how loud a whisper is? It's exactly as loud as shouting ain't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I is that, well, that was that is that a thing like how does that work it just came to mind oh <laughs> someone else think it through and tell me if it makes sense please i'm done thinking now i don't know, yeah. I don't know. i'm done thinking too <laughs> <laughs> for the night i'm sorry <laughs> um but yeah this was this was newbie star trek everyone if you like, like the episode party. you know and uh you, you know, want to help support us you could go to apple podcast or podcast addict and uh give us a review or Spotify. Uh, yeah, or I, don't think Spotify, I don't think Spotify does reviews, actually. Oh, shit. You're talking about reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, come on, dude. Yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, if you, if you, if you want to catch more stuff in general that we do, you know, like movie Star Trek. If you're new to this episode, I want to say, if you want, if you're new to this episode and you want to leave us a bad review, we'll take it. Yeah. We'll I'm totally always take open it. for bad reviews. We have we've built up enough positive ones to absorb some bad ones now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. have but, at it. <laughs> but also bad ones are kind of fun to read. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Y- you do want to know what problems people would have with you. Yeah. There's one yeah. that makes a really big political swerve at the end that I found really amusing. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so that was fun. But yeah, if you want, if you guys want to leave a review, you can go to Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict, and you know that'll be great. It'll help us out a lot. It'll help with our, as they say, the metrics with the things, you know. And uh, also, if you want to catch more episodes of Newbie Star Trek or our other podcast, the Fugitive Frames Film Podcast, which is a podcast where we discuss films either in lists or as topics, etc. Or if you want to catch our YouTube channel, it's a video game Let's Play channel called Fugitive Games. You can actually find all of that now in one URL. Just go to fugitiveframes.com. And wow. that'll list all of them in one nice little package so I don't have to make this spiel as long at the end of every podcast. And it's yeah. just nice and clean. Everyone oh, yeah, improve. Dude. Yeah, and if you want to if you want to follow our OnlyFans, go to Dan. <laughs> it's not live yet. It'll yeah, tell you why. Why'd you Wait. subscribe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're still uh, we're still getting the 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 the, the payments to to to, to route to us. I'm still buying all the outfits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, a lot it's, of Sailor it, Moon outfits and a lot of Gilligan's <laughs> Island outfits. The, it, the, 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 it's, it's a wide range of things that people want. <laughs> yeah, I was able to find the Professor and Marianne, but I couldn't find the rest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, very um, good. Yeah, if you want to catch all that stuff yeah. we do, it's at FugitiveFrames.com. All right, next week we're going to we're gonna discuss the Schizoid Man, which will be... A fun time. It's data centric. It's going to give Brent Spiner a chance to do some shit. But in the meantime, I've been Marvin here with Dan and Ricardo. You guys, hey. you guys stay safe and we'll okay. see you guys next week. Or not, Bye. dude. If you guys <laughs> want to start fight clubs, that's up to you, man. This is fucking America. There's no rules anymore. No mask, no rules. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye-bye. Adios, bitches. Bitches.